you know, oftentimes I make bold statements and a lot of times I'm wrong and it's okay. But let me tell you, a player <laughs> that I was wrong about is Montrez Harrell. When I tell you Montrez Harrell started with the Houston Rockets and then when he went to the Clippers for three seasons, I said, oh, oh, this is who he is. Oh, my God. One six man of the year, then went to the Lakers. Then he started bouncing around, went to the Wizards and the Hornets. And now sitting up here with the Philadelphia 76ers averaging five points and three rebounds. <laughs> who is this guy? I thought Montrez Harrell was going to be the same double-double dude from, um, from the Clippers where he can get you 18 points and seven rebounds. What's going on with Montrez Harrell? I was so wrong about him. You know what? I don't think they're using him right. His mm. perfect system was with the Los Angeles Clippers. Let's just say what it is. He ain't been right since then. Well, it's still led by Doc Rivers. The reuniting with Doc Rivers. I said, oh, he's going to use him. He knows Montrez. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm. Yeah, no, Montrez Harold. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but if he don't get to another team, he's one step out of the league. I hate Ooh. to say it. It's really Ooh. bad. I know. I know. He, I just don't want him to be someone that is on the free agency list indefinitely. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and their the only year, result the is for them to go play international, mm -hmm. you know, or refuse to do that and just not have a, a job. I don't like it. But, yeah, Montrez Harold. oh, I was super excited yes. when he won that sixth man of the year. He earned it. Oh, and then it's been downhill since. Dang. Yeah. Well, you know, when, when I have that, I was like, he is going to lead this team into the future in his role as a big, and that's James Wiseman. Oh, yeah, no. James Wiseman, unfortunately, I was wrong about him. I thought he was going to be the next big leader for the Warriors, just for the Warriors. And he's been put, demoted, I would say, to the G League twice since he's been in the league. He was with the G League um, his first uh, season that he was drafted. He was injured the next season in 2022. And now in 2023, he is back with the G League. And he is balling in the G League. He'll get you a double-double with the G League. <laughs> but then when it gets to the big stage, I think that the big stage is too big for him. I think the G League may be where he needs to find his home or mm. maybe with another um, professional basketball team, maybe with another team. Maybe the Warriors, maybe that stage is too big for James Wiseman because when mm. he gets in the game, he shrinks from me. And if he balls so well with the G League, why is that not translating? to when he comes mm -hmm. to play with the professionals. I don't I don't get it. So perhaps it's him not being able to translate his game to the big stage, and maybe that's just what it is. Mm -hmm. The Warriors is such a great organization that I think they give him grace and they want him to develop into who they believe he can be. But perhaps the Warriors is the wrong organization for him to be able to showcase who he is, and maybe the talent is too great in um, – Golden State for him to be able to for him to be who he needs to be to sustain him in playing and not become a has been as an NBA player. So James <laughs> Wiseman, for me, I was wrong about him. I thought he was getting ready to do. I thought he was going to sit Looney down. And oh man, you know maybe the stage is too big. We're talking about a guy who played like one or two games in mm -hmm. college and came right mm -hmm. to the league. So, ah, oh, that's disappointing. Mm -hmm. I I was wrong about Anthony Davis. Okay. I'll tell you that the way AD is playing right now, I thought we would never see bubble AD again, but here he is. AD, I'm telling you, he flipped a switch, getting you 27 points and 12 mm -hmm. rebounds on the season, playing like a monster inside, outside, playing defense, getting back confident. He's aggressive. He looks healthy, only missed two games all season, looking like he's ready to have the keys uh, to the Los Angeles Lakers, if LeBron would let him have them. I mean, AD is balling. He might be an all-star this season. I was wrong about AD because, for me, everybody calling street clothes, and I was on that bandwagon like, oh, yeah, AD can't stay healthy. Look at him now. I Look think, at him now. <laughs> I think he needed that time where LeBron wasn't on the court. I think he needed that time for him to figure out that, no, you are it. You got it. You have what it takes without the overshadowing of LeBron James also on the court. So LeBron James, you know, sitting down for a couple of games, I think it helped him. It kind of re regenerated him, I think so. So good for him, yeah. You know what, I, <laughs> Duncan Robinson, oh, Duncan. you know what, he gooped me. 
Let me just tell you, I was bought in to the Duncan Robinson of 2021. Oh, that Duncan Robinson in that season was a sniper. Matter of fact, he was so good that he helped the Miami Heat go deep into the playoffs that season. And then what happened? He got his contract extension. And for 2022, I don't know where that Duncan Robinson went. (laughs) And then 2023, he is barely even getting minutes. I mean, he went from 30-plus minutes and barely surfacing 20 minutes a game. And Mm. then when he's in the game, he is a non-factor. Like, Duncan Robinson got that money. It Needless to say, the Miami Heat overpaid for Duncan Robinson. He has not produced the product. He has not been able to shoot a three consistently since that contract. It's so disappointing. I just really, he had me. Yeah. I bought into Duncan Robinson in 2021. I'm not going to even lie. I was like, oh my gosh, he looks amazing. Because you know, every team needs somebody to be a sniper. Why not pay Duncan Robinson? He did an amazing job. And now here we are two seasons later. And I'm like, what? <laughs> he at the end of the bench? <laughs> yeah. It's a shame. That five-year, $90 million deal is not looking good right now. This is a situation of a good contract term. Oh, bad, man. Right? <laughs> This is, and I'm talking about immediately. Usually, the good contract turns bad. Maybe you know, in that final, the fourth season of the contract, where they have their player <laughs> option or team option right up in there, right before the fifth year comes. No, this one went bad immediately. As a matter of fact, <laughs> it went bad before the first season even begun on it. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Duncan Robinson. I, oh, and it's so bad. Can they even trade him? Who won't? Who wants the production right now? Oh my God. I Poor know. Duncan. So that, yeah, the he they're they're in the pickle. Seems like Duncan Robinson has lost a lot of respect, but let's talk about Devin Booker. With what will it take for Devin Booker to get his respect? Because I'm looking at the Phoenix Suns, they're number one in the Western Conference. I mean, Devin Booker's averaging 29 points, five rebounds, and five assists. He's played without CP3 since last month. He dropped 51 points. He's proven to be clutch. All that great stuff. But guess what? Can he do it in the playoffs when it matters? And that's why I think he has not taken the leap. And a lot of people still do not give Devin Booker his respect. But I'm not part of that group of people. I actually respect Devin Booker's uh, game. And I think he is Mamba-like. And he's the closest thing that we Mm -hmm. have to Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. You know what? I don't think respect is... um... Equally given, right? Because we, well, we, but people that do not respect Devin Booker and all that he's accomplished. As a matter of fact, this season, he's doing career highs. Like this season. And to be able to carry the Suns without his counterparts, why he can't get respect for that? To be at the top of the conference, to be, the Suns are number three in the league with the best score, with the best, um, standing right now wins and losses right now number three in the league and we can't give him his flowers like I don't understand that you know what makes me this is this is why I don't necessarily believe that there's equal discussion I don't think that the NBA and the talking heads do a good job and making sure they highlight the players that are actually winning basketball we will give Luka Doncic an MVP nod over Devin Booker when the Dallas Mavericks are sliding in the Western Conference. And here we go, Devin Booker again, another season with the Suns being at the top of the conference. Another season with them. But we anticipate him, in order for him to get his full respect, his full discussion due repeatedly on these you know, news stations, that he has to win a championship, got to be MVP, but everybody else can be, you know, phenomenal in their own right and not even have their their teams up at the top of the conferences. Like, what what is that? I just think that either the Suns organization is just not likable. Are the Suns not marketable enough? Do they not have enough personality, you know, in order to get them at the forefront? Because what else What else is Devin, Devin Booker supposed to do? Is he not supposed to be able to play phenomenal basketball with, what 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 do you got to put on? I mean, what what is it? What what is it? What why we don't hold all the players to it at an even standard? That's probably what's missing for me, because if we're going to be talking about John Morant, which we should, if we're going to be talking yes. about Luka Doncic, which we should, 
Why mm-hmm. equally we can't even talk about Devin Booker consistently? Is it that there's not enough flair for the in the Phoenix? Maybe that's the word flair. It's not enough flair in the Phoenix Suns organization. They don't have enough personality. What? Because Devin Booker comes in, do his job, and go home. Do we need more controversy? Right? Like I don't get it. I don't get it. So no, I agree with you. I don't think it's. I don't think he gets his just discussion enough for me. Devin Booker. Mm-hmm. Well, hopefully this year changes that. I mean, they do have new ownership or I think they're working towards new ownership. And with Chris Paul aging, I think Devin Booker will take more of the forefront and will be looked at as the leader of the Phoenix Suns. I I think he's the leader right now. I think so, too. And he will still be there once Chris Paul is gone. And Mm -hmm. I still believe that that roster with the you know, the leadership of head coach Monty Williams can still be the one to have him at the top of the conference, right? It's not only Chris Paul. It is Devin Booker that is the engine that's driving them. Chris Paul helps with that, of course. But, like, just... Yeah, Jay Crowder doesn't want to play. No, You yeah. got DeAndre Ayton, who could potentially, you know, Gone tap in out in January. He wants to. Yeah, You know, exactly. Devin Booker so... was with the Phoenix Suns through the very dry, dry stages. I mean... I think he might need to stay with the Phoenix Suns for several more years, like after the regime changes a little bit in terms of like the players yeah. in order for him to really stand out, you know, amongst his peers. But, you know, that remains to be seen. You know, though, and I often wonder, you know, as great as he is and as phenomenal as he's been playing, I'm going to give him Ooh. that title just the same. He is phenomenal. If he were to win a championship, I don't even know if the Phoenix Suns were able to win a championship. I don't even know if it would even move the needle and not hear me, hear me out. When the Toronto Raptors won their championship in 2019, their discussion about that championship was so limited. But when everybody else wins, i.e. the Lakers, we're talking about that from years, from seasons to go, seasons to come. Like let's, let's, let's cut that out. And I just wish the league and the talking heads and, and, and what it's being pushed for the NBA would change where those that are playing great are the ones that get acknowledgments. If you're not playing well, we'll talk about you, but you're not going to be the forefront. But, yes, yeah, the Phoenix Suns should always be top of mind. We should always be – we talk about the Boston Celtics. They're at the top of the, the standing. But we ain't talking about Devin Booker and what he's doing in Phoenix. I can't. Mm-mm. It's not right. So, yeah, no, Devin Booker earns he, – he's earned his respect. And I don't know what he needs to do was different than what Jason Tatum and uh, Jalen Brown and the Phoenix Suns, I mean, and uh, Boston Celtics are doing. What is, what's the difference? They both at the top of the conference. They both are doing winning basketball. What? We just yeah. like Jason Tatum more than we like Devin Booker. Give it, explain it to me. Can somebody drop it out in the comments and explain to me what the difference is? You know, there are three teams in the Eastern Conference, like number one, two, and three. I mean, it could flip flop at any given moment. The Cavs, the Bucks, and the Celtics. Are the Cavs and the Bucks as good as the Celtics right now? Yes. I say yes. I say yes, and I will say yes until something changes in the standings. But as as you mentioned, they're one, two, and three. Why wouldn't they be? A couple of game losses from the Celtics, and they'll maybe number, they may be number three. So mm-hmm. it just mm-hmm. I think they both have a lot to offer. I think they both are equally competitive. And I just believe it's the timing of when they are hot and when they're not. It's just and all of them have won games um, and lost games to competitors that they will be playing if they go to the postseason. So, yeah, no, I, mm-hmm. think, I think so. What about you? Well, on paper, I think the Seas are the most dangerous team, one through five. I mean, they've proven they can get to the finals. Mm-hmm. They have the mental fortitude and the discipline to withstand offseason controversy. They have a brand new coach that they've embraced. That's part of the maturity that I see with the Boston Celtics. And I just think that they're proven, you know, they're playing top notch basketball when it comes down to the Milwaukee Bucks. They're also proven made very little changes in the offseason. They just got Chris Middleton back. Yep. I'm looking at a team that focused so much on Giannis for offensive and defensive presence. But now that Middleton is back, I think that the Bucks could potentially you know, move up in the standings, whether they you know, end up being number one or not. But when you talk about the Cleveland Cavaliers. They are great individually, but I haven't seen them have success as a group deep into the playoffs because their time hasn't come yet. That could change this season. But, you know, when you talk about Donovan Mitchell, he's been he plays a great regular season. Evan Mobley, he's just getting his feet wet. 
And then, like, Jerry Allen, we saw glimpses of greatness of him in the NBA bubble when he was with the Brooklyn Nets. Yes, yes. Can we see that in the playoffs? So yes. they're unproven to me. So I'm going to say the Celtics reign supreme right now, mm -hmm. one through five, dangerous. The Bucks are next in line, and then the Cavs, it remains to be seen. Yeah, and, and that's only fair because this particular iteration of the Cavs is new. They yeah. didn't have Donovan Mitchell last season, so yeah. they have them this season. They have you know new players on their roster, just like the Celtics. When Before they made it to the NBA Finals, they weren't proven, just like the Bucks. Year, season after season, year after year, they, they had to push through as well. But through that push through is where they – produce their greatness and I'm saying I believe that the Cavs the reason why I say that they are that they um are as good as the Celtics is because they're at their evolution of push through right and to be at the top of the conference with with the makeup that they have with the young players that they have that have never been collectively to um a deep run in the, the postseason or to an NBA final unlike the Bucks and the Celtics what do we expect for them to do without having to be there I believe they'll get their experience this season, right? I believe that they will go deep in the playoffs this season. They are doing a great job. And then they will be able to be proven. But, again, if they've never been there, you know, what, I'm just going to discount them. I can't discount them at yeah, all. Yeah. I, I just, just really can't. I just think there's too many variables right now. And because yeah. we haven't seen it, for yeah. me anyway, I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, I know what Donovan Mitchell can do in a regular season. Can that translate to the postseason with a brand-new team? I don't know. So no, that's I why I don't have them the same as two other teams who have proven and made it because I've seen it with my own eyes. Yeah, but I've also seen the demise of the Celtics in the finals as well. well so please. although they made it, although they made it to the finals, they didn't make it through. The Bucks did. Right. So, again, that's no discredit to their effort, because, again, if the Celtics hadn't have made it to the NBA finals, I don't know what team we would be looking at today. So I'm glad that they did. I'm glad that they are on path. Um, to have a second chance at making it again. And at this time, coming through it, I believe they can, thanks to the discipline of Coach Udoka. Yeah. I'm not going to even sit up here and act like it wasn't him that set this foundation for the Celtics, right? Um, his offseason, I mean, his off-court shenanigans, I don't care about that. But his on-court, the, the Celtics we see today is a reflection of who he was last season, right? And the Bucks. Now that they have Chris Middleton back because he was not here with them at the start of the season, I can see them also being on their normal pathway to a deep postseason run. The Cavs is the new piece for me that is most exciting because if they're able to go deep, then we know that every team goes through this journey. And so I think that their journey is bright because they are in the right trajectory for what the deep postseason looks like. So I can't wait to see it. So I think they can compete at the top level as it stands today, the Cavs.